The BBC will be publishing an illustrated book linked to that programme entitled Royal Heritage, The Reign of Elizabeth II and it'll be available in March. And the whole series, Royal Heritage, will be shown again on BBC One beginning on Friday the 9th of January at 10.50 with a programme about the medieval kings. And this Wednesday on BBC Two, the BBC's birthday tribute to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother in This Your Honour will be shown again as her year of celebration draws to its close. That's on BBC Two on Wednesday evening at ten past eight. Well, on BBC Two shortly, there's Robert Altman's film about modern-day country music. It's heroes, heroines, intrigue and sounds, and its capital, Nashville. Here on One, in ten minutes, every man tells the story of four young Spanish girls who, in 1961, claimed they were seeing visions of the Virgin Mary and finds out what has happened to them and their prophecies since then. First, the news with Richard Baker. Breakfast television gets the go-ahead from the independent broadcasting authority, but not for two years and the westward and southern companies lose their contracts. In London tonight, a firebomb outside the Libyan Airlines office, but no one is hurt. The Independent Broadcasting Authority have been outlining the future of ITV. Their big innovation is breakfast television, starting in 1983, with a team of presenters, including, it said, Angela Rippon and Michael Parkinson. Two of the major evening companies are being replaced, and there'll be changes in the structures of others. Brian Hanrahan has the details. There's no doubt about who's walked off with the biggest prize. TV AM have got the breakfast television contract and they were all set to go on the air next January. But a cautious IVA has told them to wait until sometime in 1983 for fear they'll drain off advertising revenue at a time when the fourth channel is going on the air. But the breakfast show has already decided whom we'd like to get up with. Angela Rippon is said to be one of their stars. So is Esther Ransom from That's Life and Michael Parkinson. ITN newsreader Anna Ford is part of the team, and so is David Frost. What they hoped to achieve was spelt out by their chairman, the former economics editor of the Times, who became British ambassador in Washington, Peter Jay. Well, it's going as the IBA, the authority, has said, to be a news, information and current affairs show. It will be very much studio-based, and what we shall try to do is to tell people what's in the news, to analyse it, uh, to explain it, and also to give them important service information but in addition, we shall provide feature items and interesting offbeat stories about what's going on in various parts of the country. It's like a newspaper, but all aspects of a newspaper, not just the front page, but the, the whole thing right the way through the newspaper, including sport, including entertainment and everything else. We got the, the idea is that there should be two familiar presenters picking their way through the morning news. The IBA liked the idea and the enthusiasm of those willing to get up early to make it work. And it, that is a joke. <laughs> and it should be <laughs> It's going to slightly change my sleeping habits. I don't know whether I'm going to get up early or just not go to bed. But uh, obviously for 26 weeks a year it's going to change my pattern of life somewhat because everyone's committed for 26 weeks. But basically I'm looking forward to it enormously. There's no other two and a quarter hour challenge like this in, in British television. We just hope we can do it as, as well as possible. Around the ITV network, the authority has been willing to insist on quite drastic changes in everything from programme content to corporate structure. To make television more in touch with the local people, Thames and Granada may have to sell off shares, Yorkshire have been ordered to get a new joint managing director and break away from Tyne Tees Television, and ATV in the Midlands has got to be turned into a whole new company. 49% of its shares must be sold off, control of the board taken away from Lord Grade's parent company, and even the ATV name has got to be changed. The IBA wants proposals within a month or it'll reconsider the contract. Westward Television loses its franchise completely to a new group called Television Southwest Limited, which is promising much more local broadcasting. The boardroom battles between the company's founder, Peter Cadbury, and the present chairman, Lord Harris, are not the reason. The IBA says it's just the quality of the competition. Southern, too, are thrown out altogether, despite some kind words about some of their programmes. A franchise, says the authority, is not a freehold. Southern Television have put out a statement tonight saying they are shattered by the decision. It was clear from the start that they had formidable opposition. But the feeling in the region was that while their local programmes were not good, they were not bad enough for them to lose the franchise. Indeed, in the statement tonight, Southern Television say this. 
the decision appears to have been taken on the basis of future programme promises rather than on our programme record, which the authority agrees is an honourable one. So, after 23 years, Southern Television, the producers of programmes like Out of Town, Wurzel Gummidge and Spearhead, are to lose the contract to produce programmes for the south and southeast of England. Bruce Parker. And after all the excitement about breakfast television, the BBC repeated today that they were looking into the possibility of combined radio and television broadcasts in the morning. Radio vision is what they're calling this hybrid. It's already been tried out in Scotland as part of the celebrations for the 50th anniversary of broadcasting from Edinburgh. A study of the idea is underway and it could be on the air sometime in 1982. That would be just before ITV. A firebomb is...